So welcome back to Senate Education. It is Tuesday, uh, March 30th at 2.30 in the afternoon. And we will hear now from uh, Mr. Demaray. Welcome to uh, Senate Education. We hope I, you're, I think you've been in house education quite a bit. Uh, I have. And I suspect they are applauding our good work uh, that we have sent them. Um, Absolutely. Absolutely. They vote most of it out today, or will that happen tomorrow? Uh. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much. Uh, what I thought we would just have you here for, Jim, uh, before we leave uh, for the day is, I just wanna go back to civic education. We've heard a lot on civic education. We've had a lot of witnesses in. We've had different ideas. And I'm just wondering where the committee might be on this issue. And is there something that we might want to uh, get drafted uh, or not? Um, to me, it's, it's a big, big issue. I, I would like to do something meaningful. I don't wanna just do something to do something. And I have a few ideas, but um, I, uh, or one idea, but I, and it's kind of stole it from Senator Perchlick. Uh, I don't know if he remembers mentioning it last week, but that's just where I'm at. At. I would love to know where everybody else is at. Senator Chittenden, you believe green and gold and civic education. Any thoughts? I'd love to hear what you were floating around with uh, Senator Perch. Like I, I, I have the same concerns with the bill as presented as I did when it, we discussed it months ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can no, what, concerns if you want. But. Yeah, no, what Senator Perch like had mentioned last week, which I just, which I thought was really um, insightful was you know, we were here with literacy also, you know, and what we worked on with literacy is training teachers and getting teachers the resources and, and is there a way again to, and I'm not sure, is there a way to facilitate something um, to get us, you know, teachers, I think broadly, no matter what the, the subject area, whether it's, you know, science or math or languages, civic ed, are there ways for us to, um, you know, just help give teachers the tools they need to be as effective as possible in the classroom. And civic ed or uh, literacy, you know, there's there's specific things that teachers will learn that will get to them to that point. There might be things related to civic ed as well and other things. Uh, and that's just a broad thought. I just thought it was very insightful, you know, for us, like, or very interesting for us to be thinking about that again is there a way to mirror those things i agree at passing a class is not where i'm at it's more giving people the tools to do the work um center lines so um i know that I, one of your suggestions was to have some of the students the mm -hmm. high school students actually um work together to identify some of the practices that have helped them. And I, I think that is probably a piece of a, of a, I think it's a great idea and I think it's an important uh, part of it. And I, but I also think, um, could, is there any money available? Okay, ready for this one? Sure. Uh, so the pandemic has highlighted the need for a democratic process. We've had some uh, Department of Health uh, oversight and guide guidance rule rulemaking and direction that is slightly different from what we usually have in the democratic process. So we could link this to the pandemic. That was that's what I'm trying to do with that statement. Mm -hmm. And we could say that we could use some of the ARPA funds for um, a uh, an, send, have an RFP go out and ask for many schools or many organizations related to schools to um, put in place um, opportunities to share best practices around civic education. And so, you know, within that you could put, you could have kids embedded in that process as much as possible. But I think, you know, then it gets at the whole uh, concept of uh, teacher development, um, faculty development. So I'm, just, I'm thinking about how to use some of the money that might be available to us, could be ESSER funds, I don't know. Mm -hmm. uh, but to um, 
to go broadly across the state. I know we had the one group of kids in and they were terrific. Yeah. And, and the teacher there is uh, just outstanding in what he's yeah. done with the kids. Yeah. So that would be one school that might want to apply for a, a small grant to put on a, a webinar or to, I, I don't know what, but they'd have to create it. So just, that was one thought. Um, I like, yeah, I, so just to clarify a little bit. So this would be, you know, schools could get some dollars that would allow them to, somebody like Matt, uh, Henshin and his students to um, put on, you know, some kind of webinar or podcast or something about how they, the work that they are doing so that other schools could benefit from that. And, and again, sort of take some of those ideas and implement them. Yeah. Or, you know, it could be that they're, that they write up what they do uh, mm -hmm. and they, or they have a video about what they do. I mean, it could be just any, uh, it could be a, a broad range of creative opportunities for um, schools, or it could be the NEA, or you know, it it could be an institution of higher education. Mm -hmm. So it, I don't know how broadly we would cast the net, but um, just thinking that there might be a number of op folks who would uh, be interested in sharing. And then work. maybe there would be a, a website where it could be where these could be shared and teachers could go to these sites, possibly. I, I just again thinking aloud where they yeah. might download if they're teaching the Federalist Papers, they could download something that's there that other Vermonters are, are doing. Yep, could do that. Um, yeah, it could be in person. We don't know what's coming. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Senator Hooker and then Senator Purcell. Um I was really impressed certainly with the those young people and with their teacher but i also noticed that both matt henshin and representative mook commented on the need for content mm -hmm. and when i think of content i you know i i love the idea of the activities and and the action um that these kids were involved in. And I think many schools have them. I know that here in Rutland, we've had teachers who have been very involved, but it's always a, a segment of the kids who gravitate toward those yeah. courses and those classes and those activities. And so thinking about the idea of the need for content, um, I'm thinking specifically the need for knowing what democracy is, you know, knowing what the Constitution says, things like that. And I don't know how, and I'm, I'm struggling to figure out how we can incorporate those things for the broader student body, not just those kids who are naturally inclined to be involved in those things. So I'm hoping we can come up with some ideas because I think that, you know, not a you know, everybody, nobody wants a class, you know, right. you have to pass a class, but right. there's got to be some way that we can do that. And with regard to teaching across the curriculum, I mean, we did this, you know, we've been doing this for years in schools. You're teaching reading in every subject. You're teaching math in every subject. You know, when we did, uh, I taught Treasure Island, and at the same time, the math teacher was teaching coordinates and, you know, and, and uh, the the science teacher was teaching about wind directions and you know things like that so yeah. i think there's a, a place for teaching civics across the curriculum but you, you need kind of a core of um information that differentiates or even compares mm -hmm. democracy to other forms of government yeah senator Persler? Yeah, I like this conversation and in regards to the bill, what I'm still having difficulty squaring is kind of what we're hearing from AOE of saying, well, it, all this is in there, teachers just have to do it. And I think that's mm -hmm. kind of what Senator Hooker was saying. If you have a great teacher and some interested students, you can have a really great program uh, and, you, and you're meeting the performance-based standards. So anybody could do it now. So 
uh, you know, I, I kind of agreed with what the students in Henshin was saying. It's like, well, we need a year of civics and a need a year of history, but I'm not sure that's really going to change much. And that's kind of what I am hearing from, from AOE or what they sent us saying, like, well, that's all kind of in here. We just call it different things. So I'm not sure where to go on that, but I, I like the idea of, of figuring out some, some other ways of, of just supporting the schools that want to do more in this as, as maybe a, a first step. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I'm looking, I know Senator Hooker and Senator Lyons, both long time teachers and Senator Lyons, I suspect teaching science, there are things that you could share with people that you found to be particularly effective when teaching science. And I think Senator Hooker, if you're having taught Treasure Island, and I mean, there are, there are certain things, I mean, right? I mean, it kind of goes back to this literacy thing. Are there, way, are there ways that we can help and support and give teachers the tools and get it and kind of make it almost, so I'm, I'm a little stuck on the Federalist Papers right now, but you know, if we could help teachers to understand, uh, teach them, you know, a good way, not help them to understand, but an effective way to teach the Federalist Papers at any grade, you know, and, and that, that information could even be out there, but maybe part of this work is help giving money to curate this information and make it, it more accessible. I, I, I'm not sure. Um, well, yes, Senator Hooker. I, I just want to um, mention that, you know, we're talking in terms of high school kids and, you know, what they're doing, but mm -hmm. maybe, you know, this starts in grade school, this starts yeah. in preschool. I, uh, I forgot the name of the organization that sent me a book that I could go and read to uh, kids in elementary school about the young girl who goes to Washington. So, mm -hmm. you know, it, it's, it starts early, so maybe we need to have something that's in place all along, and uh, yeah. that way you've kind of build on the information that you have. And by the time you get into junior high and high school, you're ready to do that active um, lobbying. And, yeah. uh, and and we have already. I do believe even the literacy work we've done is a step toward better civic engagement. I mean, making certain that young people can read and write and communicate, that's, that's really, uh, really important. I do think though there's, and I guess I, I'll keep thinking about it and everyone can keep thinking about it. There is something that also does excite me about the idea of a bunch of young people getting together with maybe, I don't know if it'd be somebody from the agency, but asking and having, a dialogue and not calling a summer study call, whatever you want, but uh, with a little money to get together on Zoom and really hammer out and ask each other the questions and come back to the legislature with the, hey, how do we get high school students engaged? How do we get students who are right out of college engaged? How do we keep that engagement? What are the things that you're all seeing out there that, you know, concern you, excite you? I, there is, you know, we, we don't, you know, these are the, the 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 people that we're trying to engage more, and they they need to be at the pay, table to to help us. And I thought Mr. Henshin's students were great, um, and, and just doing more of that, I think we I for one would learn a lot for um, in terms of direction. Go ahead, Senator Hooker. Governor's Institute. Yep. Know, yep. They do it. So yep. maybe we could send a bunch of kids to Governor's Institute and have yep. them talk about this specific topic. Yeah, that's interesting. I mean, there's already a structure there. And, and this may have even been mentioned by one of you uh, when we were having this conversation. Is there a Governor's Institute on civic ed? And again, like you said, we don't want it to be just the, you know, those students that are always going to go for it because they're, they're just really interested. They've got the, the commitment, they've got the time, but what about those students for whom it isn't you know, their instinct to, to go in that direction or might need a little more encouragement. So you get those students who, you know, might be more reserved or, or whatever, or don't have the resources to do it, um, to jump into these kinds of things. So Governor's Institute is, is an interesting idea. 
Okay, so I, I think we'll just keep, give it some more thought. We can come back to it. Um, I'll give it some additional thought. Uh, and maybe Jim, you can stay on the line after this uh, and you and I can maybe hammer out something, uh, some kind of draft idea and we'll just kind of keep it going. Okay. Any questions going forward? Kind of a busy week, uh, taking on house bills, et cetera. Okay, great. Thanks everybody. Thanks for a good afternoon, interesting conversation and look forward to seeing everybody tomorrow. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Take care. Thanks. Thanks so much.